1980s. Retrospectively, a time of questionable fashion choices from leg warmers to shoulder pads where they really don't belong. Also, a monochrome nightmare of a wiring diagram for the 300ZX. But in Nissan's grand design, they also broke it down just a little bit easier so people who did not have an electrical engineering degree could understand what it was they were looking at, i.e. pretty much anybody who was working on this car in that day and age because this was still in the time when people still worked on their cars and weren't just like you and I where we're trying to squeeze every ounce of these soda can size combustion chambers. Every, did I say every ounce? Welcome to the video. If this is your first time here, my name's Derek, this is Fatal RPM, and this is going to be the first video of a three-part series. So in the first video here today, we're going to be basically pulling everything that's related to the engine control system. I forget exactly what it is they call it, but it's ECCS, which is what's going to control the whole EFI. In the following video, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and go through the wiring see what it is that we need to bring over so that we keep everything functional in the Z as is, uh, or pretty much everything functional as we want to keep functional. And in the third video, we're going to install the wiring harness. Now, the timeline of how these videos are gonna come out is a bit questionable at this point, mainly because as you can see right here, this is the engine, uh, fresh off of being tore down almost completely. We still have the crank pistons, rods, and some other accessories still here on the engine and in order for us to get the wiring pretty much in the car we're going to have to have this thing done more or less so I do want to point out that I did record part of this a little while ago it has been a bit of a break in between my last upload and part of the reason why is just because I got super burnout I need to get some rest I had been working on this and another project as well which I'll tell you guys about here in just a little bit but I needed to inadvertently take a little bit of a break. It wasn't intended to be that way, but that's just kind of how it ended up being. So without further ado, let's get into it.
All right, so we got quite a bit of progress with this whole setup here. So as you can see, we, <laughs> that, that corner's basically empty now. There are a couple things that are in here that I uh, didn't remove, mainly because I don't know what they are. So one of those things is this little sensor right here. Uh, the other thing was over here, oh, this guy. Uh, I have no idea what that is. It looks like it goes under the car somewhere, but yeah. Uh, the other things that are in the main harness that we're gonna have to keep, uh, whereas the plug down there that's wrapped in painter's tape goes here to the little setup for the heater core. So that's gonna be one of the things that we're actually gonna need to keep. That's currently in this harness. We have a couple lines that go up to the battery and whatnot. Uh, that's what all these extra lines are here. Other than this big thick wire, that's the main harness for the car, which is currently sitting down there. I don't want to pull it out quite yet because of course it goes through the firewall and the firewall is grommeted. Three weeks later. 1980s. Retrospectively, a time of questionable fashion. Oh no, 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 we did this already. Uh, sorry. All right, so now that we're inside the car, what I'm gonna wanna do is definitely get this carpet pulled back. And now we have access to the ECU. Obviously yours won't be this simple. There's gonna be panels in here that you'll have to take out, but this is all I had to do. All we're really trying to worry about here in this corner is going to be what's plugged into this guy. We are gonna be moving the ECU that we're gonna be putting in here somewhere under the dash, probably inside the back of the glove box. It's not gonna fit here. It's like twice as thick as this thing. So let's go ahead, let's get this unplugged. There are three plugs going into this guy here. Got these two up top and the one down here, which I can't really get my finger on. Oh, the clip's broken. It's like sitting in here, barely holding this thing in. So I'm gonna try and get this out with something. Yeah, so. There you go, that thing was broken. So now that that's out the way, I should be able to press this down and pull it out. There you go. Now that we got this out, there should just be a couple screws to pull out the ECU. Let's see, are you gonna fight me to come out? No, you're not. All right, cool. Nope, all right, there you go. All right, and that is stock ECU out. I'm probably going to have to pull the dash to get the rest of this harness out of here. All right, so now that that is all done, as you can see the light at the end of the tunnel there, we finally have the, uh, we finally have the engine harness out. This guy here is gonna be the only plug that we are going to be carrying over because this actually goes to stuff inside the car. Uh, but other than that, there were these two plugs in here that I have no idea what these go to. They weren't actually plugged in anything, so we'll figure out what this is. Honestly, it's probably for the other dash, but I don't know. Uh, in addition to that, we have these three plugs here, which are being trashed. So everything pretty much in this part of the harness is coming out of the car, and you can see that's a lot of wires. So that's honestly the bulk of it, other than the ones that go in here. But we're gonna pull this out of the harness, and from there, these are the three that were in the ECU that are getting replaced. Ooh, lift up this whole harness here. Holy hell. As it stands, uh, things that you will want to replace more than likely, seeing as how whew, 
I forgot, I'm not using the wide angle, so I gotta stick my arm all the way out to you guys. As with a lot of project cars, whenever you go standalone, if it's not like a plug and play option, you're gonna wanna have some type of fuse box, fusible link box, because what we did here is we went ahead and there was only one fusible link that's in here uh, that had to come out and it's the one that was here in the slot you may have seen during the time lapse and it's this uh, link right here but we have these other two here which honestly we're probably just going to replace because the only things that the fusible links go to are going to be the starter and then the other relays obviously I mean it's all the power that's coming from the battery so especially when this is old I can understand maybe if it's like a 90s car or late 90s car but anything I would say like over 20 years 20 30 years probably gonna want to just go with all new stuff because some of this wiring can be just clapped out as you can see like not all the plugs are completely destroyed but like some of the stuff is just questionable uh, like down here like this stuff is yeah we're gonna be replacing a lot of the stuff that's in here anyway so I'm not too concerned about it this is all the wires that we pulled out the car so yeah that's gonna be it for this video pretty much so now that we have the harness completely out the car next thing is to figure out what we're keeping out of this harness honestly I'm probably just gonna take this home I'm gonna toss it inside a box and <laughs> That way it's gonna be like 10 times easier for me to actually break down the cables that are here. Uh, also, I'll have the camera with me, probably wanna bring the tripod so that I can show you guys exactly what it is that I'm doing. But from here, what we're gonna be doing is we are going to be figuring out all the sensors that are staying on this engine here that we already have and not replacing. Uh, there was one in here, here it is. This sensor here. Now, from what I saw, it was it's a coolant temp sensor, but it. The literature says that it just pulls it from the block, which I'm not 100% sure about, only because it's, it's, it's plumbed in here, which you're like, okay, these are your intake runners, but we, this is where the, the fluid from the heater core comes through. Like it comes right through there. So I don't know <laughs> uh, if that's actually how that is. If it is, cool. If not, uh, we might tap the front of this and just put a coolant sensor in there because that's gonna be the main water out. So yeah, or in, I honestly don't remember how this whole setup works, but as always, I wanna thank you for watching. If you liked the video, please do leave a like down below, not a thumbs down, but a thumbs up, as well as hit the subscribe button with the bell icon right next to it and click all so you get notified when I do drop a new video, when I drop that video and not when YouTube decides and wants to send you a notification. Most of the time I post around noon, so noon uh, Eastern Standard Time, so. That's when you'll be looking forward to it. But as always, I want to thank you again for watching. Peace out, and I will see you in the next one.